This video is about non-rigid transformations, meaning we take a parent function and we stretch it or shrink it. Now we can stretch it or shrink it vertically and horizontally. So we're going to look at both of those possibilities. Okay. So each of these down here is relative to f of x. Now f of x could be any of the parent functions. It could be a linear, quadratic, cubic, absolute value, and so on and so forth. It could be any of those. So we're looking for patterns so that we can identify how is a number in the equation going to change the shape. All right. So here's the first one. g of x is equal to c times f of x. So c is for constant, meaning any number. It could be a fraction. It could be a whole number. Any number that's multiplied to the parent function. Notice it's on the outside. If it's greater than 1, right here, it is a stretch, a vertical stretch. If that c out here is less than 1, between 0 and 1, like a fraction or a decimal, then it's what we call a vertical shrink. All right, so if that's if c is on the outside. Now, if we look over here, c is on the inside of the parentheses. Notice that. Now, parentheses could be absolute value bars. It could be a square root. It could be um, anything on the inside with the x value. That is where you know it's moved from being vertical to a horizontal change, all right? Now, if that c value is between 0 and 1, meaning a decimal or a fraction, it is a horizontal stretch. So it's opposite of what's happening with vertical, okay? If it's between 0 and 1, it's a stretch. If it's greater than 1, it's a shrink. It's a horizontal shrink, all right? So learn these patterns, and we're going to see how they um, affect our parent functions. So let's look at A. This says compare the graphs of each function to um, f of x equals the absolute value of x. All right, so what is this 3 out here doing? Well, it's vertical. We know it's vertical because it's on the outside. Now we got to decide, is it a stretch or a shrink? Well, if we come back here, it's greater than 1, so it is a stretch. All right. Now notice this one. That 3 is again on the outside of the function, so it's vertical. But 1 third is between 0 and 1. It's a fraction. right? So this is a vertical shrink. On C, 3 times x. Okay, that 3 is on the inside with the x, so this makes it horizontal. Now we've got to decide, is it a stretch or a shrink? Well, it's greater than 1. So we look up at our little thing here. If it's greater than 1, we call it a horizontal shrink. It goes opposite what your logic wants to say. All right, so let's look at this one. Compare the graphs of each function uh, with the graph of the parent function x squared. So h of x is 4x squared. So the 4 is on the outside, so that makes it vertical. And we got to decide, is it stretch or shrink? Well, it's greater than 1, so it's a stretch. On B, g of x is 1 fourth x squared. Okay, on the outside again, so this is vertical. But it's less than 1, between 0 and 1, so this is a shrink. And C, 1 fourth x squared. Notice it's on the parentheses before it's being squared. So that means it's on the inside, which makes it horizontal. And it's less than 1, so you would think it would shrink it, but because it's a horizontal change, it's going to stretch it. Oops. Let's come back over here and do D. 1 third on the inside of the absolute value bars. Uh, since it's on the inside, it's a horizontal. But it's less than 1 between 0 and 1. So we would think it's shrinking, but it's stretching because it's horizontal. And over here, that 4 is on the inside, so this is horizontal. And 4 is greater than 1, so you would think it was stretching it, but it's actually shrinking it down. Create a graph of each with the graph of f of x equals square root of x, and also 
for each, use function notation to write each function in terms of the parent function f. All right, so I'm going to show you what this means. So let's first of all, let's think about, okay, what is happening here? Notice that there is a negative on the outside of the radical, all right? What is that negative doing? Well, if you recall our previous videos, that is a reflection over the x-axis. All right, it's on the outside, it's over the x-axis. Now, to put this in uh, function notation, we're going to use g of x, then, is it's the original function, f of x. But what's been changed? Well, there's a negative on the outside, so you just put a negative out there. That's all that means. Okay, putting it in function notation. On b, <clears throat> a to x equals the square root of negative x. Well, it's again, there's a negative with our x, but it's on the inside of the radical. So it's still a reflection. But instead of x, it's now over the y-axis. All right? over the y-axis. So in this case, to rewrite it in function notation, we would say h of x, I know it's h of x because that's given to me, is equal to the original function, but it's not just x, there's a negative on the inside with it. So I put it on the, neg on the inside of the parentheses. C, k of x is equal to negative x plus, square root of x plus 2. All right, so two things going on. There's that negative on the outside. That's a reflection over the x-axis. And this plus 2, that is a shift, and it's going to move it left two places. Okay, remember it goes opposite. It's going to go left, right? Now, to put this in function notation, then we'd say k of x is equal to, the negative is on the outside of the function, and the, the plus 2 is happening just to the x, so we put it in. All right, so on this one, it says graph the three functions in the same viewing window. Describe the graphs of g and h relative to the graph of x. All right, so, or graph of f, I'm sorry. So let's see what happens here. This is like our, this is our starting point. So what we want to do in our calculator is just start with that graph. So we pull up our calculator and we graph it. So I'm going to scooch it over here so I can sketch this graph on what I have here. All right, so we roughly sketched our <clears throat> original f of x function here. So now we're going to try what, we're going to look and see what does this g of x going to do? How is this going to compare? to the original. Well, notice we're taking x plus 2. We know that adding plus 2 just to the x should move the whole thing left two units. All right, left two units. So g of x is going to look like this, f of x plus 2, which in this case, look at our x's, it will be x plus 2 cubed minus 3 times x plus 2 squared. So notice everywhere there's an x, I put in x plus 2. That's all that happened. Now, now you're going to put this in your calculator just the same way. And I'm going to put it in just like that. So x plus 2 cubed minus 3 squared. All right, if our theory shows, it will be this guy just moved to the left. Yep, it just moved into the left two places. All right, so graph that on your graph. All right, so we moved it just to the left, just like that. Now, h of x, one half f of x. Well, we know this out here is going to change this. It's going to be vertically changing. And one half is going to shrink it down because it's between zero and one. It's going to vertically shrink that. So what does that look like in a graph, though? So what our equation is going to change, it's going to look like this. One half, all of this business. And that's how you type it in the calculator.
So what's happening? It's making this dip down, and these these guys right here in the middle, it's going to make them a little smush, more smushed. All right. So what's that going to look like on our graph? Well, we'll do this in red. It's going to follow the pattern here, but it's not going to come down as much. So you can see how it vertically shrunk it a little bit. Okay, it didn't dip down as far. Now you don't have to be perfect. I just want you to see. What are these graphs doing? All right, let's try example two. We'll start with red on this one. All right, um, what about this? Okay, same parent function. This is the same one we started with. So we know what it looks like. So it's this, that, okay? Now on g of x, what's happening here? Well, it's that's re is a reflection. We know it's a reflection over the x-axis and what is this one-third doing? Well that's vertically changing things that is a non-rigid change and it's going to shrink it. Now to replace rewrite this in function notation we would say negative one-third times all this business. Now our calculators, so look at that, it flipped it over and it made our little hump in the middle a lot smaller, okay? All right, so we flipped it over and we shrunk it vertically. All right, let's try this h of x here. 4x. Now that 4 notice is inside the parentheses, so that is going to be horizontally changing, changing things. Now we got to decide is it shrinking or stretching? Well, our gut says it wants to stretch because it's still greater than 1, but it's horizontal, so it's opposite that. So it is a shrink. Okay, so um, what does that look like? Well, we'll get there in the graph. Okay, so we rewrite, rewrite this in function notation. We would get h of x equals 4x cubed minus 3 times 4x squared. All right, that's what we need to put in our calculator and see what is it doing. Um, we know that it's going to horizontally shrink it, but we need to visualize what's happening here. So in our calculator, Let's see what happens here. Wow, see what happened? It horizontally shrunk it like a, an accordion. It took our original and shrunk it way, way down, right? So let's uh, draw this in our graph. Okay, so see how, it, like an accordion, it squished it down left and right. That's how what the horizontal shrink would look like. All right, G is related to the parent function. Identify the parent function. B, describe the sequence of transformations from F to G. Sketch the graph of G by hand. And then D, use the function notation to write G in terms of the parent function. All right, so I need to look at each one of these and walk through each four of these steps. So part A, identify the parent function. So this squared right here is my clue to the parent function, which is quadratic. So it's a F of X equals x squared. B, describe the transformations from f to g. So what's changing from the parent function to this, this function g? Well, let's start here with the inside the parentheses. Minus 4, x minus 4 means I'm moving left to right. And because it's negative, I'm going to go right 4. That 2 is a vertical stretch. And the 3 over here, don't let it mess you up because it's in the front. You could put it back here and it would mean the same thing, okay? That plus 3 would be a vertical shift and it's going to go, I'm going to say, up 3, okay? So there's my transformation. So my point, if you think about the parent function of a quadratic, it looks, it's like this, right? This point right here at the origin. So if I take that one point 
and move it right four and vertical stretch it and move it up three, then I'm going to have where my new quadratic goes. So I'm going to start at my origin and I'm going to go right four. One, two, three, four. Up three. One, two, three. Now to vertically stretch it means it's going to make it long and or tall and skinny. All right, so it's going to do this, guys. Really tall and really skinny. All right, that's as specific as I need you to get right now. You've moved the the vertex of it over from zero zero. You've moved it over and up, and you've stretched it out. Okay, so that's part C is the graphing. Now D, use function notation to write G in terms of the parent function. So I'm going to rewrite G of X in terms of f of x, all right? So that two, you could put the three out front like it was originally, three plus two, and then f of, and what's happening, it's x minus four squared, all right? f of x squared. So that's what you would write how you do part C. Now look at number four. Again, we walk through four steps. A What's the parent function? Okay, look at the power here. It's 3. So that's cubic. So I say f of x equals x cubed. So the cubic is my parent function. Again, we're going to list in any order the transformations. So minus 1 means it's going to go right 1. I know it's going right because it's happening on the inside of the parentheses. The plus 2 means it's going to go up 2. So let's graph this. Remember, what does the parent function of a cubic look like? Well, it's doing this guy. So I'm going to take this point at the origin and change and make these changes. Right up, up, right one, up two. So what was here, I'm going to go right one, up two. So when we graph this cubic function, we've moved it over and up. Okay, so this is what it would look like. Now part D says we need to rewrite this in terms of f of x. So g of x equals, all right, f of x, well f of x is x cubed, so I already have the cubed included, but I need to write in there that the x has a minus 1 on it. So I don't have to do the cubed part because that's understood with this, this piece right here. But I do need to put the plus 2, all right? So that's what it would look like in terms of g of x. Now, number 5. Um, again, parent function, what is that? A, well, there's your absolute value bars, so it would be f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. B, we're going to list our transformations. The negative out front is going to be a reflection over the x-axis. The minus 1 is going to move it to the right 1. I know it's not up and down because it's on the inside as if these bars are parentheses. And the minus 4 is going to move it down four. So again, remember the shape of the parent function looks like this, the V with a vertex at the origin. So we're going to take this point at the origin and move it all these directions. We're going to move it right one and down four. And then we're going to reflect it. To reflect it over the x-axis means I flip it opening down. You know, right one and down four. One, two, three, four. Open it down and there there's my graph. Now, part D, to rewrite this as g of x is equal to, all right, on the outside of my bars or parentheses is the negative 2, so I need to put negative 2, f of x, but what's happening to my x? I have a minus 1 and then minus 4. Okay, so all of that is my g of x equation. All right, I hope that makes some sense, and we'll see you in class and see what questions you have. All right.